Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Jacob's Weather. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the 2022 um, hurricane predictions. Um, sorry I have not been posting. I've been sick a little, and I've been trying to work on this right here. How many days until hurricane season starts? It's officially 49 days, so we have less than 50 days. Less than We only have two more months to look at it. So before you know it, guys, it's going to be here, and I'm honestly excited for hurricane season. I think it's going to be a good year this year that we're going to see just due to some trends, and we'll be talking about that later on. Here are some colleges that have that have made predictions. So you guys can see this is CSU 2022 prediction. As you guys can see, this is what they predicted in 2021. They predicted 17 named storms, 8 hurricanes, and 4 major hurricanes. Now, they were off by 2 storms last year, which I think that was pretty good for um our predictions are getting better every year it looks like because we're only becoming two or three storms off or even none storms off um but what have they predicted for 2022 they've predicted a little bit more just due to some trends and i'll be talking about that later on um so we predicted or they predicted 19 named storms nine hurricanes four major hurricanes and um, pretty much last year we had a total of 20 um, hurricane, uh, 20 named um, storms, not hurricanes, 20 named storms, and I'll be at the end of the video we'll show um, the top five most busiest hurricane seasons. So my predictions for the 2022 season. Now I did do a lot of um, calculation on this, but this is not official. This is just by me. Um, so don't. This is just a prediction. Um, so. As you guys can see, I'm um I forgot to change this right here, but named storms. I'm gonna go with 21 named storms this year, just a little bit more, just due to last year's um storm and then <coughs> excuse me and then some <coughs> sorry excuse me and then due to some um uh trends that are happening in this year with La Nino, and we'll go into that in a few minutes. So I'm predicting. Nine named hurricanes, four major hurricanes, and twenty-one named storms. Now this is um might be a busy year, um, but I think we're gonna end up seeing around maybe between nineteen to twenty-one storms. My guess is gonna be twenty-one. So how did I make my predictions? Let's wait for this to load. Alright, so this is going to be talking about the um, La Nino and El Nino. This is pretty good. This is off the Weather Channel. I think it describes it pretty well. So we're going to pause it just to... Alright, guys. So this is La Nino. And this is... I think if the trends keep going towards what we think it is, um, we're going to end up seeing another La Nino year. And we've seen La Nino for the last, I believe, four years. And the last several years, we've seen La Nino and... Like I said, it's making the um more hurricanes come into the Gulf of Mexico, Gulf coast of Gulf of Mexico and coast of the east, um east coast, which like I see you're beginning to see less um hurricanes due to um in the Pacific due to because the water's cold and dry dry air in there. But this is what La Nino is. So the Pacific has less wind shear, less dry air, more warmer temperatures. We're talking about above average temperatures than the Pacific. Um, and it has, <coughs> excuse me, nice water. So you guys can see fewer storms due to more wind shear. So there's more wind shear in the Pacific and cold and dry air where the water temperatures are cold, which cannot really support a hurricane. Now, if we take a look at El Nino, El Nino is, um, we have not seen El Nino, I don't know, I believe in 2018 was the last year we've seen El Nino. Um, I have to check on that. Um, but, you know, El Nino comes around every six years. And, like I said, winters have a big part of, they call El Nino winter and La Nino winters. This has a big part to do with the hurricane season, too. So, if you get an El Nino winter, then you might have an El Nino um, hurricane season. You get a La Nino winter, you might get a La Nino um, hurricane season. So like I said, um, right now it seems like everything is set into place where we're going to see a La Nino instead of El Nino. Um, but that's still not confirmed. We still have two more months, so but everything's 
pretty much going to place. But anyways, this is El Nino. Um, as you guys can see, more storms due to less wind shear, and warm and wet. So the water is warm over here. But on the Atlantic side, you guys can see fewer storms due to more wind shear and cold temperatures in the water. I think that was just a good um. <coughs> excuse me. I think that was just a good presentation by the Weather Channel. So we go to the next slide. All right. So, and this is another reason why I think we're gonna have a La Nino year. So you guys can see. Let's get um. Let's get this. So you guys can see um pretty much. Uh, this is the Atlantic right here. So you got the Florida, um, Carolinas, and then the North, and then the Gulf of Mexico over here. Let's actually turn that off because I am, yeah, not liking that. Alright, so you guys can see, this is Celsius above water temperatures. So you guys can see, majority Atlantic is above between 4 and to 1 Celsius above um, average. Which this, oh, which this, um... Which would cause some um, disturbance with hurricanes coming in here. Now, another thing is that we might have a ridge that might form in for the hurricane season, the Bermuda um, High. And this might end up forcing more storms to go into the Gulf of Mexico. Or even take trends like this into the um, Carolinas, Georgia, maybe even scraping the Florida area. But, like I said, we have a ridge that's forming right here, right next to the north of New York or um, east I should say of New York and like I said but another thing that is a little we're not 100% sure if it's gonna be a La Nino year or El Nino year we're pretty sure it's gonna be a La Nino but this is the MDR right in here is the MDR and if you don't know what the MDR means is the main development region for hurricanes this is where your hurricanes start to um, fire up and snap off this is going to be they call it MDR re MDR is because it's going to determine if a hurricane is going to be able to make it. If the hurricane gets out of the MDR, 95% of the time, or 90% of the time, it doesn't survive a chance of surviving. 95% of the time, a high picks it up, pushes it up to um, the north. Not um, north of the United States, but more of like, it takes a trend like this, if you're looking at the mouse takes a trend like this or it takes a trend like this and it just gets out of rhythm so if it stays in the main development region then it has a chance of making it a impact into um, the Caribbean and then eventually getting into um, the Gulf of Mexico or even going into front of the Carolinas so that's Atlantic and we think that's going to be um that's the reason why we think it's going to be a La Nino year but it is below average on the um it is below average, sadly, but say, um, by just by probably one degree, um, so or one Celsius, which is you know you look at that, that's a pretty big difference for the hurricane season. You know, one or two Celsius can make a big difference. Now if we go on the Pacific. I wish I had something to play this back, but <laughs> excuse me, guys, I'm still trying to get over being uh, sick. Um, but you guys can see over here, yeah, we we have some warmness. Uh, it looks like it, but if you see this little cold air patch right here, this cold air patch has been driving. Like why I say, it's been driving away this warm water, and I think we have winds that are going in like this. We're having um a um wind that's pushing in, and it's pushing in all this cold air and forcing all this warm water to just go away. And that's why I think we have a lot of Nino year because if you go back, maybe back in January. Or no, let's say, um, let's go back f four months ago, five months ago, <coughs> right before Christmas. This was all yellow right in here, and now it's being dragged away. So that's why we think it's going to be a La Nino year. Sorry if I'm talking a lot. Um, I'm just trying to get the reason why I have predictions. So here's another look. So you got your Pacific over here and Atlantic. Like I said, the Pacific's below average. Like you can see, it's, it's pretty below average. The Atlantic... Um, looking on the other side of the Atlantic, like I said, the main development region is looking a little bit chilly, but I think coming in the next month or two, we could see that thing warm right back up. Alright, you guys, so I'm about to um tell you guys the most 
uh, five busiest hurricane season at number one, the 2021 hurricane. I meant 2020 hurricane season. Honestly, I do remember that hurricane season. It was probably one of the best um, hurricane seasons to do tracking. Sorry. It was probably one of the best hurricane seasons to do tracking. Um, the 2005 hurricane season, which I was not born, but um, that was the second highest to 2021, which was last year hurricane season, which actually broke the 1933 for years. It was, 1933 was always for second, and then 2020 broke it. And then 2012-19, I believe uh, 1890 is also number six. Something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So I do actually want to take a look at some other stuff, uh, if it pops up. So we're going to switch into severe weather real fast, looking at it. And as you guys can see, pretty much you guys can see that we're going to have, um, in the middle, we're going to have a very chance of, this is your um, chances of severe thunderstorms or your severe out weather, tornadoes, everything mixed into one. So you guys can see this is our most with... Um, very bad uh this is uh which is pretty much yeah you're gonna see some stuff but it's not gonna be um as bad as the middle um and then you go into parts of the great lakes um um new orleans you guys are gonna start to see a light and as you guys keep going it's gonna be a um um low so if this one loads too so this is our reported tornado so We've had a tornado reports, eight tornadoes, one reports, 53 out of one, hail reports, 121 out of nine, total reports, 182, so you add all this up, 182 reports. And here we are, guys, um, so, if the map loads, uh, I think the map's gonna be stupid, I don't like, I'm, I'm not too big on these maps right here for the National Weather Service, uh, but anyways, you guys, I just showed you guys that. Um, we're going to end the video. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, share this video. Until next time.